Greetings everyone. Our next speaker is Mustafa Ali Kutbay and he's an undergraduate student in Boğaziçi University. Uh, for the past couple of months we have been uh, working on uh, some properties of polytopes and today he will show us uh, a particular uh, theorem that we have been uh, learning. Yes, Mustafa, the floor is yours. Hello everyone. I am here to talk about a subject called polytopes and a relevant theorem named gale Stevens condition, which characterizes uh, a polytope uh, with its vertices in a combinatorial way. Uh, I have an outline over here. First, I would like to give you an introduction and motivation for what I will be doing. And because of the fact that we will deal with uh, convex polytops, uh, I will give you a couple of definitions about convexity. Uh, and I will define polytops in two different ways. Then set up a few examples to make sure you understand how things uh, work over here. Uh, and then I will simply uh, state my uh, theorem and then prove it and draw some conclusions from it. First, uh, what's the first question is, what is a path top? Uh, a path top is simply an object, uh, simply a geometric object which has flat sides. Uh, for example, in two-dimensional space, uh, it's a square or triangle, a, a polygon or in three-dimensional space, uh, it is a cube. Um, but the point with path top is that, is that path tops are way more generalized versions of this uh, flattened uh, concept because we can think of them, imagine them in any dimension uh, we want. As I, point, as I just pointed out, uh, we need convexity to uh, take a step further. Uh, a convex step is pretty uh, forward, straightforward and easy definition. Uh, in order for a set to be convex, uh, whenever you take uh, two points from the set and draw a line between them, uh, the line segment attaching these two points, if this line segment lies within the set, then we call this set a convex set. After making the observation that every uh, intersection, every arbitrary intersection of convex sets gives another convex one, we take a step further uh, and uh, ask a new uh, concept utilizing this argument. Uh, we define convex hull of a set uh, for any set K, which is arbitrary, not necessarily convex. The smallest convex set containing this K is called the convex hull of the set K. Uh, it is just like the span set from linear algebra or generators from group theory. Uh, so convex sets uh, is defined by the intersection of all the sets that are superior to K uh, and also co a convex set. Uh, but uh, in this form, it is not so useful in the theory of polytops. So uh, we see that for the finite case of K, this convex hull of a set K turns out to be the set of po points, uh, positive, uh, positive combinations with a small restriction that all the coefficients need to sum up to one. So uh, after making the uh, definition, we can uh, define our uh, polytops in the first way. Uh, we can, if we have a set with finite many points and take their uh, convex hull, then we get a polytop. Uh, for example, you see a couple of points over here. If you take the convex hull of them, uh, you will get a region enclosed by this uh, geometric region whose boundary are, is line segments, flat line segments, uh, sides, uh, and also the interior points. Uh, so it gives us uh, an object in a Euclidean space and flat sides, so we call it a polytop. But uh, this way created polytops are called as uh, V polytops. Another way to define a polytop is to take the intersection of finitely many 
closed half spaces in a Euclidean space. So uh, if you cons consider the inequalities written down over here, uh, we have seven in different inequalities here. All of them uh, divide the re region into two places, regions. And we, all together, they uh, give us, when we intersect the regions, we uh, find a, a, an enclosed region, uh, which uh, gives us what we want from polytops. So uh, in this way, we can get polytops, and uh, this way created polytops are called H polyhedrons. Um, in this case, it is bounded, but it may not also be, but it is uh, not the uh, matter of interest for the time being. So after defining polytops in two different ways, uh, we get to uh, an important theorem concerning polytops. Uh, uh, the, these two way of constructions turn out to be proved to be equivalent to each other. In fact, if you can construct a polytop via V polytop construction, then you can also uh, create to construct this polytop via H polyhedron construction and the vice versa uh, and vice versa. I mean, if you create a polytop via H polyhedron uh, definition, uh, then you can also construct this all using benefiting uh, V polytop construction. So you can find the sets with finite many points such that it's convex all gives us the polytop. So I want to set up a couple of examples. Uh, the most basic fundamental example, I think, is the D simplexes. Uh, before uh, getting started with these simplexes, uh, I would like to uh, start by standard these simplexes. It is pretty easy. Uh, you need to take d plus one many vectors in the uh, Euclidean space of dimension uh, d plus one uh, and take their convex hull and get a shape. This shape will be, uh, as I just told you about, will create a polytop. So uh, for d equals two, uh, you see the example over here in three dimensional space, we take three fundamental vectors and take their convex out. We get this triangular shape. And uh, I want to note that this shape will be two dimensional manifold, even though we are uh, in the uh, three dimensional uh, space. So we uh, denote it by a delta, sub d, not d plus one. And, and the d simplex is, is, also is something uh, which can be obtained by translating these shapes. I mean, it is uh, in fact a d simplex. Uh, a shape is a d simplex, if and only if you can find a standard d simplex such that these two shapes are finally uh, isomorphic to each other. It is a, an important uh, example. We will later that uh, we will use that later on. And the other example is cyclic polytops. Uh, cyclic polytops uh, are uh, cyclic polytops depend upon a real vec uh, real valued vector uh, function uh, called as uh, the moment the moment curve, uh, which is uh, written here x of t. It takes a real value t and uh, brings it to the vector uh, of this form. A cyclic polytop um, is created by choosing the and different real values, putting them in a moment's curve whose dimension d and take their convex hull. Uh, due to the fact that all these t values uh, are distinct to, from each other, we can uh, write it down in a more compact way by uh, write, uh, by uh, denoting it by c sub d of n rather than all these t values. Now we get to the main theorem of the talk, Gale's evenness condition. Uh, we uh, we let n and d. We will use them to uh, to talk about cyclic polytops. 
uh, we choose all different points and distinct points and order them. Uh, we, we first claim that this C sub D of N is uh, a simplicial polytop and, uh, and further and more importantly, when you pick a set S, which is a subset of the natural numbers uh, from one to N, uh, this set S forms a facet of our polytop if and only if a condition called Evans condition is satisfied. And uh, Evans condition is as follows. Whenever you pick I and J, which are not from S, uh, then, uh, and you consider the number of elements in S uh, and between I and G, if the number of elements are even, then we call uh, this set uh, satisfies even this condition. So a subset S uh, forms a facet, if and only if it satisfies even this condition. Uh, to start with the first part of the proof, I mean, we just claim that the example two is also an example of example one. Uh, I mean, cyclic polytops are in fact simply should be polytops. Uh, to prove this, we invoke a famous theorem called Vandermann determinant identity. I'm not inclined to prove this here because it may take a little long, but just to gain a little insight about it, please uh, notice that, uh, in fact, this determinant and this product uh, is, in fact, a multivariable polynomial. And whenever you pick two different columns in determinant or two uh, different pick uh, the indices the same at the other side in the, of the equality, the, in the, I mean the product, uh, they both vanishes. Uh, I mean, they both give zero. Uh, so uh, it, is just, it is a basic motivation uh, to believe this is true. And if we choose d plus one different vectors this way and consider them, uh, it appears that uh, if it is not zero, then uh, they are all finally independent. Uh, and it yields that uh, we have something uh, which can, something that can be constructed by choosing d plus one many different vectors uh, and taking their uh, comics out. So uh, c sub d of, and should be a final isomorphic to one of the D standard simplexes. So it is a D simplex, a D polytop. So it concludes the first part of the proof we uh, write uh, until here. And now I will continue with the uh, others, uh, with the remaining parts to prove this, uh, if and only if statement, uh, we let to uh, we let a determinant, a linear function, and also a, a set called a hyperplane uh, sub S. Uh, this F sub S of X uh, is a linear function. We uh, we determine the t values corresponding this set S, plug them in the moment curve and write them in the columns of our linear function. And, as, and in the first function, we uh, put a variable that can be changed arbitrarily. Uh, apparently, we get something uh, linear. And when we equate this, it will give us a, a, a hyperplane which divides the uh, space into two regions. So upon that, we define H sub S as uh, the X values that satisfies uh, F sub S of X equals zero. Uh, so now uh, here's a little illustration about our argument. Uh, whenever we pick a point, uh, which is in this, which is corresponding to the set S, then we get, a, uh, we get zero. And other than we will not get zero. And uh, since the, curve uh, goes along the plane, uh, whenever it uh, has a zero, then it will change its sign because we will get to the other side of, the, of our plane. Uh, 
so to conclude the proof, uh, we need to observe that uh, in order for S to form a facet, we need to see every other point at the one uh, at the unit side of the of our space. So um, S forms a facet if and only if F sub S of X has the same sign for all points. Uh, so when you when you for example go from this side uh, it is not in s we continue it's not in s it is in s we change the sign we change the sign we change the sign uh, we change the sign and we come this far so uh, we uh, if it if it could be out then we would see that uh, for example, let's say there's also a point S here. Uh, I mean, I and J and the number of elements K, this K, let's say odd. Then we would see that this curve comes from here and get here. So we would see a point here and a point here. So uh, it would mean that this hyperplane could not create uh, a facet because uh, it's in fact, divides the points into two regions, uh, but we need to see all of them in the one side of the region. So it concludes our proof. So a, not a quick one, but an important corollary is that our cyclic polytop C sub D of N is uh, D over two floor neighborly, which in fact means that any subset S, uh, which is a, uh, uh, any, uh, which is a subset of the natural numbers from one to n, whose cardinality is less than d over less than or equal to d over two, ver uh, versus uh, forms a phase, uh, and this neighborly property in fact gives different solutions of various external properties. Um, this can be a reason why this is important, and uh, I need to name an important theorem in the optimization theory, which, which is uh, named as the upper bound theorem of McMullen. This uh, upper bound theorem implies that uh, a deep part with n vertices uh, has the maximal uh, uh, number of facets. Uh, a deep polytop with n vertices, which has more, uh, which has uh, the maximal number of facets, should be a cyclic polytop. Uh, this theorem is proven by our corollary, and this corollary is proven by the Gale Simonis condition. Uh, so, uh, this is why Gale Simonis condition matters, and it also quickly uh, characterizes a polytop with its. Vertices, yes. That's what I am. That's what. That's all what I am talking about. That's all what I want to talk about. Thank you for listening.